Welcome core groups again for our third week now in our sermon series about what happens when we pray. Um, I just want to reiterate what I mentioned today. I really want to be that church that has effective prayer rise up before God where we know that every single church member as we are coming together on Sunday are prayer warrior is a prayer warrior where we are all if any person has a prayer request where they can get to get us and, and not just do the courteous thing and say i'm going to pray for you but really taking notes and, and going into their their chamber with god and just interceding for people and that god starts doing things according to what we have prayed in accordance with his will i really want to be that praying church and i believe for just god to put all of the sermon series and uh, in, into our church and, uh, and onto me like this i believe he wants to do something and I believe that what he wants to do, it will be accompanied by effective prayer of our congregation. And there will be in the future more people that will come in burden, that will come in heavy, that will come, maybe the enemy has just locked them up in a cage or imprisonment of their own sins or failures or something. And God wants to bust them out. And we as a church, as a congregation, are the prayer agents that God wants to activate to loosen the shackles on them, to open the dungeon door so that they can come out into the light of God. I want to be that church. And I believe God wants us to be this church so that he can do the impossible. So the people will know in the community, man, you can go to any religious church that you want. But if you want to see a real change in your life, go to Riverside Church. God is working and he's active in this church. And when those members pray, something starts happening. I want to be known as that church. And I believe that's what God wants us to do. So today when I was talking about um, the continuation about the heart of prayer, um, God didn't allow me to move forward into the next thing, um, but instead to, to dwell on this a little bit longer. But um, it's not about that we pray, but how we pray is very often a determining factor. I mentioned today that based on James 5, 16, the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Um, God knows that if a person has a right standing with him, if there is no hindrance, there is nothing in the way, there is something that, that God can answer those prayers more easily. There, this person is not cluttered up with sin or unforgiveness. He's going to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit. If there's nothing that grieves the Holy Spirit, uh, this person can be more unhindered in the presence of God, uh, sensing what God's mind and what God's will is, and then he can pray more effectively into it. That's what God wants us. And so uh, the prayer of a righteous availed much, but what are those elements that somehow keep us or they, they overlay that righteous standing with God? And, um, and uh, we, we have gone through a couple today. I mentioned sin in general. Um, uh, uh, Psalm 51 where David speaks and prays. He cries out from this place of a sin and, uh, and asking for God to just come and redeem him completely. Don't cast me away from your presence, O oh Lord. Uh, renew a right spirit with in me and that should be our prayer if we if sin is the roadblock then we got to get sin out of our life and and never go and tarry too long in our repentance process but be quick to repent and then the other things that uh, the Lord showed me was just this anger and unforgiveness uh, anger again is like one of those consequences of unforgiveness if we don't forgive somebody we get angry but how can we be angry at somebody if we have truly forgiven them and so some but sometimes those are roadblocks and then judgmentalism just being judgmental even though the lord said by the same judgment that we judge we will we will be judged so if we, if we come before God and we say all the right things, we do all the right stuff, if we hold judgment against Him, there's something in the spiritual realm that stands against us. And so this can also be a roadblock. And then I mentioned fear again, um, that without, without faith it is impossible to uh, please God. And if we have fear, if we shrink back, but in, in the Old Testament it says, but if my servant will shrink back, I will not be pleased with him. So we, if we approach God, we need to approach him from a position of faith to believe that he can and will do what he has promised. 
and then something can start happening. So those are some of those elements, and I just want to encourage you, maybe just talk about some of them. Maybe if you're uh, uh, bold enough, share about sin, or uh, talk about for anger, unforgiveness, or uh, judgment, or, or fear, where some of those elements have really kept you from entering into the presence of God, into this effective state somehow. And if you feel like you have never entered in, then maybe just share it in a group too. And by the end of the group, let people lay hands on you and pray for you, or maybe confess sins. The Bible says, confess your sin to one another so that you may be healed. I believe that in that confession, that in that safe environment, right there in the core group, that if you speak it out, release can start happening. God can open heaven over you and start that process with you. I just wanna give you one scripture that I have not mentioned today that kind of sums up all of this too and this is from Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 the Apostle Paul uh, writes first he he kind of as he is writing the Philippians church he's kind of talking about his own past and his own Bible school education if you so want he said I'm circumstance uh, circumcised on the eighth day uh, according to the Jewish law he had to be circumcised so basically he's saying I have fulfilled everything down to the the, the point uh, to the Yoda, everything is carried everything out. So on the, um, on the eighth day um, of the people of Israel, of the uh, tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, um, and to the law, a Pharisee. So knowing the Bible, knowing scripture really well, just like a Pharisee, and those had those esteem back then. So he had like, I'm, I'm walking around like a theologian, right? I know the Bible, I, I'm a Hebrew. I, I, He's got everything going for him, everything according to the natural he has going for him. But then listen, as, as he's going on, uh, he says, uh, as to righteousness under the law, blameless even. But then listen to what he says. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And then he goes on, he says, indeed, I count everything as loss. He counts every, everything, all his everything that he has accumulated, everything, all his accomplishments, everything that he could normally brag about. If he would have a, a title pinned on the wall of a doctor title, he would have it, or a master's title, or accomplishments, or anything. But instead, he says, everything that I have, everything, I count as loss. He's willing to give up because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, as, as garbage, literally. I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law or from his own flesh, but the one that comes through faith in Christ. See, when, when I'm talking today about those things that can hinder us in effectiveness of prayer, I wanna be like the Apostle Paul. I wanna have all of us completely unhindered from all of her, the bad and the positive, but it doesn't matter what it is, anything that is a hindrance to us entering into that realm of God, into that spiritual realm, the spiritual realm where God is, and where, where He wants to do effective things, where He wants to turn nations around and stir the hearts of kings, or, or uh, fight demons uh, on behalf of, of our families for prodigals to come home. We want to count everything as loss, as easy as this, just like Paul. I count everything as loss. I count it as garbage, as rubbish, just in order to gain Christ, to have a more a fullness of Christ, and to have him more and more every single day to live through me. And he counts everything else. He throws everything overboard just to have more of him and less of himself more of Christ and less of himself. And I, I want to apply this uh, to our things here with unforgiveness and judgment and fear and anger and, and sin. Whatever it takes us, let's just count everything as lost. Even if we have been wrong, let's count everything as lost so that we may gain the surpassing worth of, know, of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord. And for his, for his sake, we throw everything everything else that hinders us overboard leave everything aside forgive every person we can because god got something better it doesn't matter if we hold anything against god's got something better 
So what, what is this worth to uh, maybe not being willing to resolve something or uh, uh, go the extra mile or do something? God's got something better. And if we can focus with all of our heart on the better things that God's got, we got to leave all this junk behind. And I just truly hope that if you were also, we all live life, and if there is something that has been done to you or will you struggle with sin, with anger, with fear, with concerns, anxieties about the future, um, get to that place where your prayer can be completely unhindered. And if you need the fellowship of your brothers and sisters through confession, ask them for prayer. I believe we can all get there together. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.